good morning good afternoon good evening depending where you are getting me from welcome to our morning devotion in case you are new here my name is Bella Kumam Debra and Choka we do our morning devotion every weekday from Monday to Friday between 5 and 6 a.m. East African time happy new week uh, just feel most welcome our sharing today is about uh, living on to follow Christ. That is our sharing. And our key verse is from the book of uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 25 up to 33. And we are going to sing hymn on song number 625. But before that, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the gift of life. As we want to do our morning devotion, you ask you to be with us, help us. And let it have a great impact unto our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. So, uh, you are all welcome. Let's sing hymn or song number 625, Higher Ground. <clears throat> we can sing together. I'm praising on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. See, praying as I onward upon, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and I shall stand by faith on heaven, stable land, a higher plain than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where this power, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. You know, good morning. You are welcome. Lord, lift me up and I shall start. By faith on heaven, stable land, I have claim than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. <clears throat> I want to live above the world. Those satans that at me I have, for faith has called the joyful sound. That song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and I shall stand by faith on heaven, stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. <coughs> I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lead me up and I shall stand by faith on heaven, stable land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. <coughs> Mama Kevi, good morning. Mom, morning, you are welcome. Onimoke, ontenene, mancho moche, oigoro, ense area, yes, Santa Aria Igora Menyetem. Living on to fall Christ is our sharing this morning, and I'll give us from the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 25 up to 33. I'm going to read from my New King James Version. Uh, this is when Jesus was teaching uh, the multitudes and the disciples, and those people wanted to follow him. So he decided to pass this information. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm reading Luke chapter 14, verse 25 up to 33. The Bible records, 
Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, <clears throat> If anyone comes to me and does not have his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. <clears throat> For which of you intending to build a tower does not, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what, what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, why the others is still great way off, he adds a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. This is uh, God is direct Jesus' directions to those people who wanted to follow him. Like now, oh, you can't leave your mother, you can't leave your children, you can't leave anybody to follow him. Like you go as a person, you go as an individual. So he went further and giving uh, out illustrations like if you want to start a project, you have to sit down and consider the cost. Do I have enough? To finish what I have started. He gave another illustration like if the kings want to fight. They have to check on their their manpower, the military. Somebody has to be prepared enough for that war. The same way. He was just saying like, are you prepared to follow him? Or it's just, you have to wake up and say, I want to follow Jesus. Because... By starting like this journey of following Jesus is like a project of your own. Do you sit down and consider the cost? Have you sat down? Yes, you want to follow Jesus. You want to do what he was doing. You want to be God's child. What is the cost? This is a project of your own. Are you? Will you be able to leave all your family, children, everything, your work, and you dedicate yourself to Jesus Christ as an individual because he, just, he was just giving them illustrations and directions for them to choose from. If it is impossible, you can just say aside and say, you know what? The conditions are too many. I can't follow. Like he said, if somebody starts a project and it fails, people will start mocking this person. Like, why could this person start this project and he knew or she knew very well she didn't have enough? That is what happens even in our real life situations. You find somebody has started building a house, maybe a project, and then it remains even unfinished even for the next 10 years. Plants start growing inside the house that 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 are uh, in complete uh, construction. People will start mocking this person. Oh. She just got uh, a few coins and decided, decided to, to set up a big house that she couldn't finish. Mockers are there. Jesus saw them. So he was just preparing his disciples and the multitude. Like, you know what? Following me is just a project. It's like a project of yourself. Are you ready to leave your family, brothers? Or you have to say, oh, I have to go with my daughter. I have to go with my son. I have to go with my parents. Let me convince them first. He was just giving explanations and illustrations to, to, to send the message home. Like, if you want to follow me, you have to leave all, or you have to leave everything and start working on me as your project. Just start following me as your project. Carry everything and say, you know what? I have to leave everything and call myself. I want to follow Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean that you stop what you are doing, something that is giving you 
maybe the work you are doing you you start like i am following jesus i just want to follow jesus there are many things you can do that can please him following his example even jesus himself was working moving from one point to another spreading the gospel that was work people surrounding him all day long listening to him spending your time talking to the multitude is not easy he was working so he decided like i'm working for my god i'm the son of god i'm working for my god i'm going to spread the gospel and whoever who will follow me is the one who is going to benefit this person who is ready to follow me i'm ready to hold his hand i'm ready to hold her hand i don't want my people to be mocked like oh they started following jesus and now this is what has happened to them he doesn't want any complete projects that is why he said that you have to sit down and see the cost remember if you decide like you want to follow jesus you are going to lose some of your friends this is what happens because he just mentioned even friends you can't be that person who likes clapping so much you drink with your friends you do parties now you decide like you know what enough is enough the life i'm living i'm not comfortable with the life i'm living then when you remember like you are going to lose some of your friends you say no let me stay a little bit let jesus remain fast because you know he has said you can't be like i have to hold my friends i have to hold my family i have to hold my children fast before i follow this jesus if you decide like i want to follow jesus it is you it is a an individual decision a personal decision you want you have to make that means the cost you have to look at the cost where well, hey i want to follow jesus what about my friends so when you remember the good times you have been having with your friends and then you you remember oh it's like i'm going to i'm not going to meet with them anymore because maybe your friends they are non-religious they just feel like anything about jesus christ they don't like anybody to mention anything about jesus christ before them so when you you consider the cost like if i'm going to mention anything about jesus christ i'm going to lose my friends they don't want anything religious you sit down and consider the cost but he gave out this condition saying if you leave everything and follow me that is when you'll be my disciple so you will have to choose between your friends and jesus who are you going to follow maybe there are some things there are evil things maybe you have been doing maybe you have been calling people with your family maybe there are some family members they are just doing businesses of calling people only like we have to con we have to con to survive and then you feel like there is that spirit that is pushing you you know what you need to leave this and follow jesus that is a pro you are god's project you just want to do your project you want to follow jesus i want to leave these evil ways and say like i want to follow jesus this is the right way i want to follow remember it comes with a cost that is why you have to decide as an individual am i going to follow or i just leave it jesus just left it open to the disciples to those people who are listening to his teachings knowing that it is an, a personal decision if you decide to follow me you have to leave everything is it a child who is making you drag behind some people get discouraged because you know maybe you have your children and they are not uh they are into the world maybe your children people are just maybe gossiping your children because of their behavior and maybe you are god fearing but because of your children you feel like no i can't stand even in front of people this because maybe my children have become a disappointment i don't know where to start from i don't know where i'm going to whom i'm going to talk to you start feeling like you you have been uh, pulled behind because you you can't make a decision i just want to tell you that when it comes to god it is a personal decision you are not nobody don't allow anybody to drag you behind let god forgive your children let god save them just pray for them don't just in, say like you know what if my my children just failed me i have to go and maybe join them when it comes to following jesus christ is a, a personal decision it is for an individual that is why jesus was not specific only to the disciples because the multitude was there if he wanted to talk to the disciples only he could have 
set as a, a private place and preach. But he decided to share this to the whole world. The whole world, those multiple people who are the crowd who are there, the disciples who are also there. We are also here because we are following what, what has been recorded. He wanted also to us to know that it is a personal choice. Following Jesus Christ is a personal choice. Without looking like, what am I going to lose? It is a personal decision you have to follow. Like, I am leaving everything. And I want to follow Jesus. So long as you do what he wants. What, what God requires to be good. What pleases God? Helping the poor the same way Jesus was doing. Sharing what you have with others. Without uh, looking aside that who is watching me. Or who is <clears throat> going maybe to celebrate me. Without looking on sides. Like this is a personal decision. This is a project. I want... I don't want my project to remain incomplete so that I, I can give mockers a room. Remember Jesus said if somebody has started to set up a, a, a project or a building and then it remains undone, incomplete, mockers are there. They are watching to see what will happen next. Yes, you decided to follow Jesus Christ. What happened? That is why you find some people, maybe somebody has just accepted Christ as their personal savior. Maybe they have been baptized. You find judges are from the fence. They are saying like, mm, give give this person one one month, give this person one week. He or she will go back to dream drinking. She will go back to the clubs. Hmm? This person is possessed. They can't live. They are just praying. Uh, they are just maybe they are just playing with God. They are just playing with water. They they are not supposed to be baptized. You see, people just judge you because they don't know that maybe this is a project you are working on. Accepting Jesus Christ alone is a project of your own that you want to go with it up to the end until you finish. So if you decide like, I want to follow Jesus Christ, don't listen to what friends are saying. Don't listen to what mockers are saying. Just target your destination. Your destination is that I want to become Jesus' follower. I want to become, I'm God's child. I know God will accept me. You just have that positive energy and positive attitude towards yourself so that you cannot give people rooms. You cannot give mockers rooms to discourage you and you go astray again. Then you backslide simply because of what others said. I just want to encourage each and every one of us this morning. If you have started following Jesus Christ, this is a journey. You have to accept it. Don't look aside. Don't look right. Don't look left. Don't look back like I am going to lose my family. There are some people who don't believe. There are some families who don't believe about Jesus Christ or anything. If you mention that, you can even be persecuted in your home. Don't look at those. Just know that it is a personal choice. You can just leave everything. By leaving everything, it doesn't mean that you have to leave the work you are doing. It simply means Dedicate everything you are doing to God. Give God a chance to give you direction. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Emulate what he was doing. Give God a chance in your life so that he can direct you. You need to go to this way. You need to go to this way. So it doesn't mean that, oh, go stop digging. Go stop working. Follow Jesus. Carry the Bible all along. Continue reading. It is not like that. You just accept Jesus as your personal savior. This is a personal decision and you know that it will just mold you to be the required product, to be the finished product that God uh, wants. So I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. Just know that if you are ready to follow Jesus Christ, leave everything to him. Uh, Rani Rich, nasema amen. Galdoza, nasema amen. Karolino, kwambosha, nasema amen, amen. Uh, maybe kwamboka, nasema mungu. Morning, dear Mungu ni mwema kila wakati. Happy new Monday to all fans. Thank you. So guys, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. We just do this morning devotion briefly as a way of starting our day with God's blessings. We can keep praying for one another because uh, the task ahead of us is not easy. And we pray that God will continue intervening us 
and making us to be united as we make this world a better place for everyone. Let's pray as we finish our morning devotion. Rebecca Kinya Nasaba Morning Mom, Amen. You're welcome. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for sharing what we had this morning. We pray that you help us forgive our sins and help us to do what you require to be good, Father. Allow us to accept that we have started the project of following uh, Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and we should not go astray because you keep on holding our hands to mold us to the right product that you want, Father. We pray for the sick in various homes and hospitals. We pray that you heal them so that they can continue praising your name, Lord. We pray for our brothers and sisters working in diaspora, Gulf countries. We pray that you protect them, cover them with the blood of Jesus, till they meet with their families once more, Father. We pray for our children wherever they are. We pray that you protect them, cover them with the blood of Jesus, guide them. Let them understand that you are the only God who needs to be worshipped, Father. We pray for the candidates of this year as they are going on with their exams. We pray that you help them so that they can pass with flying colors, Father. We pray for the Lack Mom family. The task ahead of us is not easy, but we pray that you keep on intervening as we make this world a better place for everyone, Father. All our enemies, friends, and relatives, wherever they are, we pray that you forgive them their sins and remember them in the book of life, Father. In a special way, we remember widows, orphans, and widowers wherever they are. We pray that you provide for their needs as you promised to be their father. We pray for the prisoners. We pray that you give them their freedom once more. Allow them to be reformed. I know that there is light at the end of the tunnel, Father. We also remember for those people who have delayed to get their own biological children. We pray that you bless them, Father, as you blessed Hannah and Sarah. We also pray for the travelers. We pray that you send the traveling masses so that they may reach their destinations well. We pray for the youth struggling to secure jobs. We pray that you open doors for them so that they can be able to better their future, Father. The activities of the day, we dedicate them unto your hands. We pray for our country, Kenya. We pray for love, peace, peace, and unity. And we pray that you guide the leaders, give them the wisdom so that they can lead your people to the right direction, Father. Whatever we didn't pray, we pray that you send the Holy Spirit so that you can intercede for us. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. So, thank you so much for tuning in. Happy New Week. See you tomorrow.